Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining Tyler and myself um, for this uh, video chat and Mental Health Week. I'm Stan Kucher. I'm a senator for Nova Scotia and uh, used to be a psychiatrist. Uh, so uh, have some familiarity with the mental health area and so, so pleased to be able to talk uh, to Tyler here uh, about uh, some really, really important things related to mental health. And, 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 and Tyler, can you uh, share with the viewers a little bit about who you are and, and, and what it is that you do? Yeah, sure. I'm, of course, somebody who lives with mental illness. Uh, when I was about 18 years old is when I first got diagnosed with depression and anxiety. I went through a journey to figure out how to get better and how to cope my mental illness. It led me down some dark paths, um, some just painful experiences, but it also led me to some beautiful experiences. Um, it led me to things like meditation. It helped me realize that I can use my creative abilities as a form of therapy for myself and also realize that it can help others and I can help and the stigma surrounding mental health. That's really what I do. I, um, I speak a lot to different schools, different organizations and companies about my experiences. I am a filmmaker, um, an entrepreneur, and I just use my lived experiences to fuel, uh, to fuel my projects and to turn something that I once could see as there into something bright and beautiful. Well, that's so uh, amazingly said. I, mean, I, 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 I saw your film uh, in my mind, right? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, that, that was great. You know, what, one of the things that you said that I really uh, wanted to, to highlight, what you talked about that, that you had struggles, but that there were also beautiful things that, that came through your struggles. Mm -hmm. uh, and and what, what, one of the, the ways that I think too many people characterize those who have lived through a mental illness is they characterize them as fragile yes. or not being able to handle the, the everyday challenges and opportunities of life. But, but you, you, would, you would challenge that, that, that characterization, I'm sure. Oh, 100%. I think about the amount that I've been through because of my mental illness and how I had to just keep getting back up and keep going, keep pushing forward, keep trying to learn new strategies to cope with my depression and anxiety. And it's really leaked over into other aspects of my life. It, makes me more resilient even when it comes to things like creative projects i will just if i mess up oh i messed up i'll just keep going it's not going to stop me and i think that's a beautiful thing yeah it's uh, amazing the way that you just put that it, it seems that the challenge that you have faced through working and dealing with your mental illness has actually created some skill sets and competencies for you that you then have been able to utilize in other parts of your life. Yeah, 100%. It's, it's not like that the mental illness was defeating and deflating you, but mm -hmm. the fact that you had to face it yeah. actually May, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but gave you more adaptive capacity for other things in life. 100%. In a recent interview, I said that I look at my disabilities, like my ADHD, my uh, depression, anxiety. I used to look at them as these flaws that I had. But now I've gotten to this place where I can... I kind of look at them as these 
unique superpowers because I can use them to create things and it's pretty cool. I, I love that message because it's so contrary to some of the of the stereotypes that people carry yeah. around in their minds, right? It must actually have taken, and I'm going to use the word courage, because it must have taken an awful lot of courage to, as a young man, have to you know, come to terms with what you were living with and then how, how to begin a journey that, that you had no idea where it was going to end up. Can yeah. you say it, it, more about that? It was very overwhelming, even just being a man and being a black man from North Preston. It was tough, um, not really knowing much about mental health and not seeing people talk about it. Um, it was very lonely. At a certain point, my depression got so bad that I had the thought I don't know if I want to be here anymore. And that's when it's like a switch went off in my head. Mm -hmm. And I had the thought, okay, if I'm going to stay here on earth, I'm going to live. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to get better. And I'm just going to try my hardest. And um, I had to take on that mentality of, okay, I'm not leaving this earth. I'm not ending my life. I'm going to stay here. So if I stay here, I'm going to live to the fullest. I'm going to do the things I'm afraid of. I'm going to speak about my mental health, even though it terrifies me. Yeah, and yeah it, it worked out. <laughs> Thanks for explaining it that, that, that well and that way. Because that really takes a lot of courage to to not only f get involved in work, the hard work that it takes to get better, yeah. but also now getting involved in, as you say, talking to other people. In the beginning, it was really, it was isolating. And I felt like people didn't understand. I, I, it was hard for me. And I would have moments where I would feel like people just didn't care. But then I kind of came to the realization that a lot of people just don't know. Yeah. They just don't understand. And I had to have compassion for others and not hold that against them. Just continue to take on that mindset of I'm going to live my truth. Once I started thinking that way, I was I got to the point where I started getting in front of large group, groups of people. And that's the reason why I can get in front of large groups, large groups of people, because my mentality is, oh, if people don't understand it, that's OK. Um, hopefully at some point they will. But yeah. I can't control that. All that I can control is who I truly am, and I'm just going to be that. Boy, in that short time, you hit so many wise things. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the courage, the forgiveness, uh, mm -hmm. that takes courage too, the compassion, and, 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 and the really, really important point, focus on the things that you can control. Yes. And let the other stuff you know, do its thing. Yeah, that's so important because it's like, what can you do? It's just going to make us think and think and think and causes anxiety. Just focus on those things that we can control. Sage advice. So you're going through this COVID time, this isolation time. Uh, you're going through also another unique time. We're both Nova Scotians, and we know the, the, the traumatic events of the last week. Uh, so, and, and even if we are not directly impacted, like a person knowing a person that died, we're all impacted in this. It was incredibly small problems. 
how does some of that, the compassion, the forgiveness, the, 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 the importance of controlling what you control, how does that help you get through this particular time? It helps a lot. I'm human and I, <laughs> I urge people to remember to be easy on them, to be easy on themselves because we will get frustrated. We will be sad and that's okay. Um, it's human emotions. Um, when the shootings happened, I I was angry. I was frustrated, and that went on for a few days. Um, and I had to take a moment to just meditate. And I actually talked to my friend. Emma Slade, who lives in the Himalayas, and she's um, this Buddhist nun, <laughs> and she told me to look at it in a different way, and to look at it in a way that can help me. Also, that compassion piece, it's like we're all in this together, and just doing my part and injecting a little bit of positivity wherever I go is what I like to do. That's been helping me so much during this time. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's it's so important. Uh, anger is such a destructive emotion. Yeah. Such a destructive emotion. Yeah. And so uh, letting it go and, and in, in its place, putting some other things which are more constructive emotions. That's a uh, good way to do it. As sort of as a last thing, if you had to give some advice to young guys, you're a young guy. Mm -hmm. um, when you're faced with some of the things that you're faced with, what, what, what advice would you give them? Uh, I would say, I would say let yourself feel and to take this time to be self-reflective, um, figure out what your priorities are, um, don't be hard on yourself. I see a lot of things <laughs> going around, like people are being so productive, which is a great thing, and I'm being extremely productive right now, but just making sure that you don't burn out and take those moments if you want to just relax. Just relax. If you want to play a video game or something, just do it. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> um, we don't always have to be working in working on ourselves, um, but just to take this time to get this, get to know yourself better and figure out how you want to come out on the other side of this. So it's sort of neat. You just brought that full circle. Got compassion to others, but also compassion to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> that, that works. Yeah. Well, you know, th th that is such a useful piece of advice. It's so important. But well, thank you very much, Tyler, and um, good luck on that next uh, documentary work that, that you're working on, the film work, and then those, all those other good things. And uh, I'm going to take some of your, your advice and uh, maybe uh, instead of getting on the next 25,000 phone calls, go for a walk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> All right, lovely, lovely to meet you, and you take good care. To meet you too.